That's certainly one of the main claims there that we can, quote unquote, enhance cognitive function in cognitively healthy adults. We're not mm -hmm. looking at people who have cognitive decline or dementia or other things. Although, interestingly, a lot of the research on many of these ingredients is in the cognitively mm -hmm. declined population. So one of the suggestions is that there's an increase in available acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that's responsible for communication between nerve cells. So acetylcholine is a contributor to memory, learning, and some muscular contractions. Uh, that, yeah, and, that's that's the main driver that they're trying to get to is by increasing acetylcholine and free choline, like you mentioned mm -hmm. in the brain, you increase verbal memory, you increase the, the firing of neurons. One of the things that also kind of you see in there, part Part of the claim that they're making and part of the research with things that enhance acetylcholine is this ability to kind of avoid distractions. Are you able to complete a task while other things are kind of going around in the background? And how, how quickly does your attention shift to these other things versus the task at hand? One of the one of the primary benefits that theoretically could be achieved here with alpha GPC in particular mm -hmm. is this ability to stay on task longer and avoid distraction. I found a few papers that actually did show significance with alpha GPC. And some of these are in some of those cognitively declining groups, like so following stroke, that was one of the reasons, one of the uh, areas that alpha GPC has been shown to improve is because of the effect it can have on vasodilation mm -hmm. and increasing blood flow. Uh, that was one of the kind of connecting mechanisms there. It could also boost some of that cognitive recovery following that kind of, you know, ischemic injury event. Um, I saw some other research that showed it could improve memory and learning, could prevent brain fog, also can help with uh, distractions and the ability to focus longer. Um, I would say of, of the ingredients in Alpha Brain, Alpha GPC is, I would say, the most strongly supported for having an effect on on memory and overall effect may be small to medium, but there is, mm -hmm. there are, there are studies that do show an effect. However, <laughs> the one, one key thing to note here that we'll identify with all of these different ingredients, the research that shows support is 300 to 600 milligrams of alpha, alpha GPC. So mm -hmm. at the very least, we know there's not enough alpha GPC in this to really get us even into that 300 to 600 window, let mm -hmm. alone what the blend is of, of these other ingredients. And that was, right. I will say, that was my main critique of the G Alpha Brain as a supplement is we have these different blends, the focus blend, the flow blend, and the fuel blend. And there's an amount per serving listed, but it doesn't tell us the amount for each of the individual ingredients. And so we're left to guess like, well, how much tyrosine is in here? How much mm -hmm. phosphatidylserine? How much alpha GPC is in here? Mm -hmm. We can't say, we don't know. And that's a big hole. Many of the research papers I saw are in not cognitively healthy patients. And or, that's what I was looking at was cognitively healthy. So yeah, these right. were like generally fit. And I was literally just taking that note because I wanted to circle back to that, mm. which is you found significance in something like alpha GPC. And maybe it is great for those that are on the cognitive decline. But for those that are, you know, functioning normally, right. if you will, right. then there's no additional benefits, but it could have great benefit for people on the decline, which then is great. Yeah, most most of these, like I said, it's kind of after after stroke or after mm -hmm. you know some of these events, uh, for example, one of these uh, phosphatidylserine helps ADHD and auditory memory in kids. Like that's part of the the flow blend, right? So um, a lot of these you're seeing maybe there's a little bit of benefit, but is it population specific? And more so, is it in the right dose? And again, the the primary critique I would have is we don't know the actual dosing of most of these ingredients. Would it be fair to say it's not cost; it's cost benefit? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's not money because I don't want to say that I'm not willing to spend money on my health or wellness or whatever, but it's just I'm spending 20 to 40 bucks a month and it's more expensive than than 20 bucks a month. I, I can assure you of that. But let's say it's 50 bucks. Is there something else for 50 bucks that would get me more? And right, yeah, cost right. benefit. And I think for me in my experience, yes, there is. I, I would agree with that. I think the cost benefit of this for me, again, everybody's mileage may be different, but based on research, based on our experience, I would agree it's the, the cost benefit is not quite there for me. Mm -hmm. the, the benefits are pretty minute and I think that money could be better spent elsewhere.